pagi Bareka Friends sekalian, sahabat Bareka dengan Petrus Ganda Mana hari ini di pagi yang cerah ini saya sedang berada di suatu tempat yang menjadi tempat favorit saya terutama kalau saya lagi berkunjung ke kota Bogor yaitu di Mr. and Mrs. Cakes Pastry Shop tempat ini sudah buka sejak tahun lalu 2020 di bulan Februari dan saya beruntung pada saat tempat ini dibuka saya juga diundang oleh sang pendiri dan pemilik dari Mr. and Mrs. Stiop untuk mencicipi berbagai produk yang dihadirkan di tempat yang asik banget tidak heran walaupun melalui masa pandemi tempat ini ternyata bisa mendapatkan performance mendapatkan hasil yang bagus di dalam bisnisnya dan pemiliknya begitu gembira dan bersemangat dalam menjalankan bisnisnya di kota Bogor yang juga sangat dicintainya sang pemilik bukanlah penduduk asli kota Bogor tapi begitu mencintai kota Bogor beliau lahir di Jerman ya, dan merupakan seorang baker dan pastry chef internasional melanglang buana ke berbagai negara sebelum sampai di Indonesia dengan keahliannya membuat roti dan cake yang dilaksanakan oleh beliau di berbagai hotel bintang 5 di seluruh dunia akhirnya beliau memutuskan tinggal di Indonesia dan sejak tahun lalu membuka pasty shop kebanggaan kota Bogor yaitu Mr. and Mrs. Shakes hari ini saya akan mewawancarai pendiri sekaligus Otak utama di balik kesuksesan Mr. and Mrs. Cake yaitu Chef Dieter Spear. Good morning, Chef Dieter. Petrus, good morning. Nice having you here. Yes, it's always when I arrive in this Mr. and Mrs. Cake's pastry shop, it's always like feeling warm, <laughs> feeling exciting, looking at the cakes, beautiful reds there. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> really, you always put your heart there. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. yes, yes. Once again, thank you for having Bareka team and me in your shop again. Welcome. And for this uh, opportunity, today we will uh, talk with you and also want to appreciate that you support Bareka magazine again with your product for welcoming Christmas, the cakes for Christmas. And one of your products, the Cakes for Christmas, will be in our cover. Thank you. For our last edition in 2021, uh, the Christmas edition. Okay. Well, you already show us about three products, but one of your product, which is Boucher de Noel, the Noel, That's Boucher correct. de Noel, yes. or you look, you look, yeah, uh, will be in our cover. Now, would you tell me about what is the idea for you? to create Bushi de Noel for uh, the cakes uh, celebrating Christmas. Why that cake is very special for everyone to celebrate Christmas. Can you explain about it, Dieter, please? Okay, you can. Our, our concept at Mr. and Mrs. Cake is very much classic European bakeries and cakeries. Okay. Yeah, mm. so, and when we are looking at, uh, from Europe, we have, yeah, in France, the Bush de Noël have originated. Mm. Like in Germany, we have the Christmas Stollen Christmas originated. Stollen. Yeah. Like from Italy, we have the Panettone. Panettone, yes. From England, we have the Mince Pie. Mince Pie. Yeah, mm. so, and this very four classics been really all around the world. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so that's why also here in Bogor, yeah, so these four very classic Christmas bakeries, yep. of course, plus the gingerbread, plus the various cookies, yes. yeah, but in terms of Christmas delicacies, cakes, we do all the four during Christmas available at Mr. and Mrs. Cake yep. because we represent classic European cakeries. I see. Okay. Uh, so that one, the Bichet de Noël, is originally coming from France. France, yes. From France. Okay. Would you explain? Uh, in France, usually that kind of cake uh, made of what ingredients? Originally. Okay. And here again, when we are looking at, let me always take a step back. I beg yep. your pardon for that. Yep, please. When we are looking at traditional Christmas bakeries, okay. they always use exotic spices. Oh, really? Because in the Middle Age, uh -huh. cardamom, nutmeg, cloves, vanilla, cinnamon, yep. star anise, anise, it all came from the Orient. Yeah. And was extremely expensive in Europe. Okay, precious ones, precious ingredients. Very precious. Mm. Yeah. Then we are looking at nuts from almond to hazelnuts. Another ingredient, very expensive. Yeah. Then all Christmas bakeries has in common lots of butter. Lots of butter. Another expensive ingredient. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. to worship their religion. They only have used the most expensive ingredients for worship. Yeah. So then, of course, each country has their own culture. Okay. Mm. I mean, let's say for Germany, the Christmas Stollen. Mm. Yes, they contain all the spices, high butter, blah, 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 yeah. to make it very expensive. And the Stollen symbolize the child Jesus Christ when it was a baby, because when Christ was born, they always put some clothes and wrap the babies. Mm. But the babies, they were basically like this. Yes. So that's why the Christmas stollen, they have this unique shape because uh -huh. it's the arm, the corpse. Oh, I see. And the arms. That that's is the what idea coming from. Exactly. Yeah. So then from France, the U-lock, mm. this is then a piece of the Christmas tree. I see. The Christmas tree. Yep. Yeah. So yep. symbolize, symbolize the Christmas tree. Now, yeah, so. Yeah, and that's where they put that into a cake. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, that is okay. from the bush to Noel. To adapt with the local situation like for Indonesian market or maybe for Bogornese people, is there any twist that you put in the uh, bush de Noel that you made in the Mr. and Mrs. Cake? I mean, yes, what, what we are doing here because there is not just one type of bush de Noel. I see. Yeah, in yeah. terms of creativity, it can be wide open. I see. Yep. Now, yep. important is the unique shape. The unique it, shape. It has to symbolize a tree. No. So you cannot make a bush to Noel round <laughs> or a triangle. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So it has to be something like a rollout. Okay. Yeah. A cylinder. So like a tree trunk. Yeah. You know, you cut it, and then in terms of garnish, let's say we have done today, we have done a passion fruit mango bush mango. de noel. Oh, really? We have done a kind of a type of a black forest type of bush de noel. Yep. Yeah, so in terms of flavor, this is a little bit more flexible. Important is here the shape. Bushy. Mm, I see. Now, I know that making that cake needs uh, expertise and skill. So, what is the challenge for making that uh, cake uh, for the, well, let's say, for the pastry chef that want to create Wish and Oil in their, in their kitchen? What is the key points that they have to keep in mind that when making that one, it's very important to, to be successful to create that one? That's a tough, that's a tough, very <laughs> tough question. Or secret, <laughs> or secret <laughs> recipe. No, 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 there's <laughs> nothing, nothing to do with secret. I see. Now, so yes, here in Indonesia, for us, the challenge is because we only have to have everything is halal. Halal. Mm. While in France, they use rum raisin, rum. they use cromagnier, you know, oh. so to enhance the flavor, flavor and the quality of the of the bush to Noel. Mm. So here in Indonesia we can't. Yep. No? So the key is then for us to, to choose ingredients and prepare the bush to Noel that in terms of quality it is very high quality, affordable, affordable and halal. 
I see. That's the, the, the challenge. That, the is, that is the challenge. Yeah, and okay. here again, our challenge is because we pride ourselves yeah. that we don't use margarine, we don't use shortenings, we don't use artificial flavorings. Yeah, so that we use high ingredients, high quality ingredients, yet we have to make the cake high quality and affordable. I see. Not cheap, but affordable. Yeah. Usually that uh, you look or uh, wish the Noel uh, serve in which part of the dinner or uh, let's say is the dessert one? It's a dessert one. Dessert one? Yes. It's either afternoon coffee. Afternoon coffee also. Because in Europe you have afternoon coffee. No matter which country. Yeah. Okay, you call it high tea in England. Yeah. Yeah, but in Europe between lunch and dinner there's always room for a coffee and a cake. No matter you go Austria, Switzerland, Italy, Germany or France. Yeah, so and if the Bush de Noel you don't have as a dessert, then also in the afternoon, you know, you can serve that together with your coffee to enjoy. I see. Now, if it is uh, served and enjoy after, uh, in, at the end of the dinner time, yeah, uh, what kind of beverages which is uh, uh, suitable to, to enjoy that cake? with the let's say is it with okay. the coffee or the, the classic is yeah either coffee tea or hot chocolate i see okay. yeah when i say hot chocolate because in europe hot chocolate in europe when it's very chilly when it's very cold cold in the winter then time. a hot chocolate is very comforting i see yeah and yeah. then it goes very well with the piece of cake okay in a hot climate like Asia, mm -hmm. if you have a hot chocolate which is very rich and you have a cake, that might be too much. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, so if here, much. if you have a cake, you prefer maybe just a coffee or cappuccino, but not something as rich as a hot chocolate. Yeah. Thick and rich. Yeah. yeah but yeah. in Europe, winter time, cold, having a hot chocolate and a piece of Bush de Noel is comfort. Okay. <laughs> so. We already got the complete story about the Buse de Noel as the cover picture in our uh, October to December edition. Now we have another one, which is the Christmas Stolen, which also you uh, prepare and uh, you know sh show to us and let us to take that product for our. Uh, inside picture in our magazine could you tell us about the christmas stolen yeah, maybe the sh brief history background and everything okay i just as i explained the shape of the stolen is unique okay because yeah. it represents the corpse of jesus christ yeah. and it was a baby mm. so that's why we have this very very unique shape yeah and then the most famous city in germany mm -hmm. is dresden the dresden. city of dresden very much in the north yeah, so, and there's even laws determine the quality of a Christmas Stollen. Mm. The minimum content of butter, the minimum content of rum, the minimum content of raisin, hazelnuts, almond, sukade. Sukade is like mixed peel of orange and lemon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so that is the minimum. They determine this by law. Mm. And you can only call it Dresdner Stollen if it comes originated from the city of Dresden. Oh, okay. Yeah, if yeah. it's made outside, you you can make you may you say Dresden style Stollen, but you cannot say Dresdner Stollen. Mm -hmm. Now, so the Germans are very particular about that. I see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. it's only outside the city of Dresden. Yeah, let's say because in Dresden itself they have very classic spices they add in. Yeah, and only outside the city of Dresden you're a little bit more flexible that you have your own spice blend. Mm. Yeah, to create that Dresdner Stollen. So for us, our Dresdner Stollen is very rich with raisin, hazelnut, almond, zucchade. Zucchade. Yeah, mm. and then as a spice we use lemon, cardamom, star anise and vanilla mm. so having that beauty, beautiful uh, things but what we don't do we don't put marzipan inside i see 
Yep. Yeah. So some Germans they prefer marzipan, but here in Asia people don't like marzipan. I see. Yeah. 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 So that's why our stollen doesn't contain any marzipan, but it's a plain stollen. Yeah. And this year we're gonna start selling stollen already together with the first of Advent. That means five weeks before Christmas, we already start selling Christmas items. Because I was so surprised last year, the demand for stollen, for the Christmas cookies, for the panettone was so high. Yeah, I was so surprised. Even some Bogonese that came to us, they say, listen Dieter, after Christmas, can you continue with the stollen? It's so nice to eat, you know, and da da da. I say, no, I'm, I'm a traditionalist. Now, so already two weeks before Christmas, we stopped baking Stollen. Oh, really? Because in Germany, the, the response even, is they, really they, yeah, great. It was yeah. very good. In Germany, they start baking Stollen as early as August, mm -hmm. and they let it rest for two or three months, mm -hmm. and then they start selling mm -hmm. for the Stollen to develop the, 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 the flavor and a certain texture, yeah, to I make see. it very short. Uh -huh. yeah, so, in December, the bakeries in Germany, they wouldn't bake Stollen anymore. Oh, it's really already they don't, finished. They don't want to sell fresh Stollen, out of question. I see. Yeah, so so you want to get the, what is it, the flavor and the by keep it in a long time? By keeping, yeah. I see. Already we start, we start already preparing gingerbread and yeah. certain cookies like Basler Leckerli. Uh -huh. You cannot eat fresh. I see. Yeah, I have special tin boxes uh -huh. now we, where we put this all in yeah. to store that after two months they have this very characteristic tenderness because there's lots of honey inside and if you want to eat it fresh it's too hot. Mm. It tenders when you store and that is also where the flavors are really developed. Ideal time is how long to, to to preserve it, to keep it, to keep it until we start to eat it. I mean, let's say for the pasta, luckily two months. Two months. Yes. Wow. Gingerbread also two months. And what kind of uh, temperature uh, that we have to maintain? Uh, we, we keep it. We keep it air conditioned. And the air conditioned, so yeah, something like around minus 20, 25 20, to 28 20, degrees. 24 years. That's yep, correct. Yep. Yep. But. If it is in the room temperature, is there any possibility that the mold is, you know, coming out? Okay, not not when you have it. I mean, no, it will not. It will not because the amount of honey and sugar is very high. I see. That what will prevent. It will, it will, prever, uh, will pr uh, preserve ah. the product. The product. Yes. Mm. Yeah, but mold will not come to this product. Okay. Uh, how to enjoy that uh, Christmas toilet? Uh, what kind of drinking that is complement for that one and then when is the right time we, we want to enjoy the Christmas I think story. I think also here like like with the Bush de Noel is either afternoon tea yep. or as a dessert I see yeah, because even as a dessert a slice of a Christmas stollen together with a with the with the rum raisin ice cream or a chocolate ice cream vanilla ice cream very nice to eat okay and uh, for the drink what kind of drink that also suit with that one okay in Christmas germany stolen? in germany you can have the hot wine the glühwein really yeah because also the glühwein is relatively sweetish yeah and it's spiced spice ah. yeah so you have wine you put some orange in you put some cinnamon stick in some gloves you put in and then you boil it yeah so then you have kind of a hot wine of a glühwein and because it's so sweetish it goes very well with cake i see okay uh, again, it's because it's cold. Cold. You don't want to do that in Asia where it's hot. Yeah. You, you feel after one zip, you feel like you're in a sauna. <laughs> yeah. Yes, so, yes. but in cold countries, it's comforting, very comforting. Mm. Now to the next cakes that you already prepared for Barica is the panettone. You mentioned in the beginning that panettone is coming from Italy. Uh, can you explain what is the special of this panettone? Okay. The panettone has to be very light. Has to be very light. Mm -hmm. And that is the tricky part, not easy. Not easy. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, and it contains very high amount of egg yolk. Egg yolk? Yes, mm -hmm. very high egg yolk and very long fermentation. Oh, 
That the one dough involves in fermentation also. Oh, long fermentation. Long fermentation. We have to make something like a starter, a bigger, but already the bigger contains a sourdough starter. Oh, sourdough starter. Yeah, inside the bigger. And the bigger, the fermentation time is 15 to 18 hours. My goodness, so long. Yes. 15 to 18 hours. So, and then after this, when I prepare the main dough, so, and also the main dough, the first fermentation is three hours, second fermentation is two hours, and then I portion, uh, another one hour rest, and when I put them in a panettone mode, the, the proving time is also anything between three to four hours. Proving time four hours? Yes. In, yeah. in what temperature? Again, it's about 28 to 32. Oh. Okay. In, that, in that kind of temperature. Very slow rising. Yep. Baking is also very tricky. Yeah. We are putting the panettone in the oven when the oven is about 150, 160. Very low. Very low. And then we inc when the panettone is inside, we increase the temperature to 180, 190. Mm -hmm. yeah, so then you really can see that in the oven, how the panettone slowly rise. And when the oven reaches 165, 170, that is where the yeast get killed. Okay. And that is more or less when the rising right. stops Stop. and then it gets into the baking. Oh. Yeah, so and the panettone, there is also no preservatives, but because of this long fermentation processes, it's a long shelf life product. How long? Six months. Six months? Under room temperature in Asia. In Asia? Yes. Oh, with this uh, humid yes. and a little bit No hot. problem at all. No problem at all. Because of the sourdough bacteria which has developed in that panettone, it preserves the panettone. I see. So it's a very, very light cottonish sponge. Yeah, yeast dough. So very light. And in Italy, they like to, they like to eat that together with the sabayone. Ah. That is, you take a masala wine, egg yolk, yes. sugar, yeah, and you make it very frotty, very foamy. Frot, yeah. That would be ideal to serve together with the panettone. I see. That's yeah. how we eat, we eat the panettone. Yes. So we, with, with, with the fermentation process involved, we categorize this one as cake or as bread. And then you explain about that, making it, making in the beginning the sourdough. Yeah, d definitely uh, it's a cake, it's not a bread. It's cake, not bread? Yes. I see. Yeah, it's, the stollen is a cake, the panettone is also a cake, although it may remind you of a brioche, yeah, but it is really a cake. Okay. With that kind of, uh, you know, uh, rigorous uh, process that we have to put uh, ourselves in preparing the panettone, what is the most uh, failure, uh, uh, you know, things that usually the baker or the chef uh, ex having experience with? Again, I'm, I'm lucky. I'm 62 years old. <laughs> <laughs> I traveled. I traveled the world. I have been worked in so many countries. I have worked with so many nationalities. Yeah. And I was always curious and interested. It's like, I used to work in Damascus, I mean before the wars and everything. Syria. And I love baklava. 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 I love this Arabic sweets. So I went into an Arabic bakery and I asked them if I can work with them for a few days because I want to learn how to make baklava. Mm. And they teach me how to make knafe. The, the string pastries and everything. I, I learned that. I mean, they didn't spoke English. Yeah. I didn't spoke Arabic. <laughs> but somehow we connected because they appreciated my curiosity. I see. And that the German guy is coming. He wants to learn Arabic sweet. Oh, they were so open. They teach me everything. Okay. You know, yeah. and how to take the, 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 the fat from the cheap. Yeah. So how to melt this and how to pour that over, you know, and things like that. They teach me everything. I see. Yeah, and like with Panettone, I really had genuine interest. Yeah, what is what is the history of the Panettone, you know, and then what is the making of Panettone? 
So, and with panettone, it is really, it's an extremely soft dough. Mm. I see. Soft yeah? dough. Soft dough. But you see, in Asia, Southeast Asia, the baker prefer firm doughs. They don't know how to handle sticky dough. Mm. If the dough is sticky, they are adding flour. Flour. Ah. Because the challenge here is that most bakers, they learn by doing. Mm. Even if you go to culinary school, yeah. they teach you the recipe, yeah. not, the, the not the making, what, what leads to a recipe. Mm. What is the culture where this product comes from? What do we have to look for and so forth? They don't teach that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so because I'm old, because I travel the world, because of my curiosity and my, and my interest, I always wanted to find out. Yes, of course, I've been to Italy. Yes, I've been to Milan and so forth. And of course, I'm visiting bakery. Yeah. Just to taste, just here and there, you know. And then I asked and for the Italians, why do you think this is good and this is not so good? And they explain me. Mm. Mm. Ah, and that's again, I learn, I learn, I learn. I yeah, and then every challenge, like we, when I made the panettone last night, it didn't work like when I made panettone last year. I see. Oh. Yeah, yes, I had the pressure. Petros mm. is coming, picture taking, bloody <laughs> hell. I have, to, I have to make it work. Uh. But even though I followed the recipe of last year, uh -huh. it didn't work out like I wanted it to be. So after this, of course, I have to make a little bit R&D. So my point is, if you just teach, if you just been taught to follow recipe, Maybe you say, I make the recipe, that's the result. Uda. That's all. But for me, I wasn't happy with the result. Mm, mm. I wasn't happy. Something with the recipe didn't work the way it's supposed to. So I have to go back R&D. Maybe the quality of the flour changed. Maybe some other ingredients. Mm. It's not what it was last year. Mm. And this influenced the final result. So mm. I have to redo my recipe until I'm happy. Because I know how a very good panettone is supposed to taste. I see. Okay, so that's all for that three products that you have already prepared for the Bareka magazine. Uh, one of them is Bush de Noel, will be in our cover. Okay. Now I would like to ask general questions about celebrating Christmas in Indonesia because you have long experience also with Indonesian uh, you know people and <clears throat> uh, culture and as you know that Christian is not the, the major uh, not the major religion but what do you think about celebrating Christmas in Indonesia related to the you know culinary business C can you explain okay now we have two complete different issues. Mm. Mm. The culinary aspect, that's easy. Okay. Mm. Yeah, so let's say on Christmas Eve, in my family, we had something like a potato salad and, and Wiener, Wiener Wurst sausages, okay. Vienna sausages. Vienna sausages. That was for Christmas Eve. Mm. On the first Christmas day, then the food was opulent. Yeah, in terms of the roast, you know, sometimes we made something like a sour roast yeah. and we use Christmas spices. Mm. Oh, very delicious. I see. That was also something very typical for us Christmas. So to recreate that, recreate that, that is easy because you have quality imported beef, you have quality, quality pork, you, you have all the ingredients here to make it happen. Okay. But then cultural wise, in Europe, they're singing White Christmas. Oh, uh, no matter how much I sing, you will never have White Christmas in Indonesia. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it's never been winter in Indonesia. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You know, and then I then I talk to you about Glühwein, hot wine. I will never drink hot wine here. Yeah, in Europe, it's cold. Yeah, so it's part of the tradition. Fine. Mm. But this is Asia, it's not matching. 
I see. Yeah. So for me, Christmas emotionally is not about vibe and ice and cold and things like that. Emotionally is the whole family is together. Okay. And there it's a plan of Indonesian culture. Yep. How is the gift sharing, you know, and how are the ceremonies and how is this and that. That is where I adapt to. Yeah, and then in terms of cooking, yeah, that is where they adapt to. <laughs> yeah, well, and so that is then the emotional aspect, hmm. which makes you warm, comfort, again, emotionally. And then you say, yes, that is Christmas. Hmm. Well, we are really Indonesian people. It's family-oriented people, yes. right? We are, you know, like to be gathered together in every situation. Exactly. Maybe not in Europe. Just in a special occasion, they want to be together in one uh, place. But coming again, because last year, Mr. and Mrs. Higgs already experienced the Christmas time for selling the products in the cake shop here in Bogor. Yes. What is your experience with that? last year christmas time in your shop especially during the pandemic time and this year that you think that you want to prepare to the customers exactly, because last year mm. again i'm i'm blessed i'm blessed that we have such a good business in bogor mm. that the bogor people again 99 percent of my customers are indonesians from bogor Indonesians from Bogor. And they love our authentic cakes. They just love it. Their support is great. So when last year then there was Christmas, I was thinking, should we do Christmas? I don't know. And that's why I just prepared little stolen, some Christmas cookies, you know, like we had the, the vanilla kipfel and we had the cinnamon stars. Mm. Yeah, so then yeah, we had the Stollen, we had the Busch de Noel, we had the Panettone and I was so surprised by the demand. Mm. We almost had to bake every day. My goodness. Yeah, and then some, some Indonesian says, Dieter, when I go to Italy, the, the Panettone is with raisin and chocolate. I say, okay, tonight I make Panettone with raisin and chocolate, tomorrow we'll have it. <laughs> So it really surprised you with that kind of I surprised, response. I really, I was really surprised and they came authentic, they said either we love it, we love it, we love it. So that's why this year, mm. yes we add like Basler Leckerli, we add the ginger Lebkuchen, Spekulatius, we're gonna add so many more items. Okay. Because last year they were really asking. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. And I said, you don't have to ask me twice. <laughs> Last year I had a problem to get all the spices. Uh -huh. So this year? This year? Okay, there are still no spices available, but I ordered from Germany. My daughter is sending us the spices so that we can, we can make all the Christmas delicacies. So I will, this year we are much better prepared for Christmas. So what is your message for you know, the Mr. and Mrs. Cakes customers for welcoming the Christmas Eve this year. What is your message to them? Okay, as of the 1st of Adwen, we have you covered. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you have to be very, you know, uh, happy and, you know, enthusiastic for this Christmas 2021 when you want to eat something original uh, for your Christmas time with the Christmas cakes and also the cookies and breads served by Chef Dita in the Mr. and Mrs. Cake Shop. No matter you are. <laughs> you are in Jakarta, you are in Bogor, or maybe you are in Bandung when you are in Bogor City. Make sure that you put in your list to visit Mr. and Mrs. Cakes during Christmas time. Come to Bogor. Come to we Bogor. welcome you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Chef Dita, really appreciate your support for our magazine readers. Thank you. To share your ideas, to share your also uh, creativity and the uh, product that you show how you want to uh, put in the higher level for them to enjoy the quality culinary uh, made from 
uh, made in Indonesia, but coming originally from Europe. Thank you. And my message to all the readers at Bareka magazine, please let Bareka know if you want to know something in particular. If you want me to share with you something in particular. Is it a recipe? Is it a mentor?